Friedman Adventures Live. And man, I'm so happy to go up north there to the island spirit out of Ventura Sport Fishing. Daniel Hadaway is standing by the captain of the island spirit. Daniel, it's great to see you. Great to see you, Phil. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I got a little surf fishing session in, and <laughs> while all I caught was a bunch of guitar fish, I had a good time. It was a beautiful day. And, you know, I mean, even though it's not the sought after Corbina or Spot Fink Broker or whatever, it's still fun. Yeah. Fishing's always a good time. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something about that, and then we'll get into the, the whole thing. But I was talking to my mm -hmm. son, Patrick, who had a really rough day at work yesterday. And when I yeah. talked to him, it sounded like a real, like, he was a little stressed out, so I called him back an hour later just to check on him. And I go, yeah, are you okay? And he goes, yeah, hey, I went out back, hit the pond. I caught a couple of big bass. I'm good now, man. I'm I'm just <laughs> fine. So yeah. it just it proves exactly what you're saying. All right. So uh, I feel like we got a lot to talk about. I mean, we only have a little bit more time left for people to save 20%. Um, yep. All Island Spirit in California. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about this weekend, what you have in plan. And then, of course, the rockfish opener looms huge. But why don't we start with saving people 20%. What's that all about? Yeah, so um, just a few days left for the special, guys. If you want to come out fishing with us, give the landing a call at 805-676-3474. Or visit us on VenturaSportFishing.com and... Uh, Either typing in the code preseason20 or mentioning it on the phone, you'll get 20% off on your fishing trips aboard the Island Spirit and Californian. So just a few more days left for this uh, special, so I'd, I'd get on it before it's gone. All right, and then another special that you don't have to get on right away, but that is Sunday's <laughs> Kids Fish Free on the Island Spirit. Is that throughout the year? Yeah, it'll be every Sunday throughout the year. So uh, obviously this Sunday we're going to do the kids trip, but um, same thing. If you, uh, I think the, the code is uh, kids F free. It's kids F F R E E online, or you can just uh, call the landing and mention that um, you want to take advantage of the kids fish free uh, special. It's a free child's ticket ages 12 and under with the purchase of an adult fare. So uh, we'll be doing that all season long. We do have a trip up for this Sunday. If you guys would like to bring the kids out fishing, take advantage of that deal. Uh, same thing. Get in contact with us and book a trip. All right. Good stuff. If anybody out there has a question, you can ask Daniel. I'll be asking him all kinds of questions because I'm always interested <laughs> in the very latest. One more thing. And uh, that is that the Rockfish Opener is on Monday. It looks like beautiful weather. And yours truly, yeah. I'll be up there. I can't wait. I'm going to come up and shoot a video. I might even bring like a real professional camera guy with me so oh. I can even fish nice. a little bit. That would be a go. novel experience for me. But uh, why don't you talk about the rockfish opener for a second? It's going to be big time. Yeah, the rockfish opener is a day that we uh, certainly spend all off season looking forward to. And it's uh, right around the corner here. So, um, yeah, we can finally keep rockfish. We don't have to throw a bunch of uh, tasty critters back anymore as we're, uh, you know, fishing throughout the day. Um, that Just because rockfish is open doesn't mean we're going to exclusively fish for rockfish, but it's definitely going to be a part of our day. Uh, I still like to go poke around and try to catch a game fish, maybe a sea bass or halibut at some point in the day, but we definitely will spend some time uh, prior to that rock fishing in the morning. So um, the tackle does change a little bit. Um, you're going to want to bring probably like 12 and 16 ounce sinkers along with your lighter stuff, just, just in case we, uh, you know, want to dip down in the 300 foot depth or so to try to catch some nicer quality fish. Um, uh, hooks change a little bit too. You could, you could fish the like mid-sized circle hooks works really well for a lot of guys rock fishing just in case, uh, you know, you're real deep and it's hard to feel the bite a lot of the times if you don't have spectra. So the, the circle hook helps a lot. So I'd say if you're coming fishing on the opener, bring some, um, bring torpedo sinkers anywhere from, you know, four, five, six ounces all the way up to 16 ounces. So we can kind of have you covered with all the different fishing we'll be doing throughout the day. And then uh, you're going to want your small... Um, you're going to want larger circle hooks for rock fishing. 
Um, and that should that should cover it. All right. All well, right. I don't I don't know why we can't see you right now, Dan. You may want to re-add or something, but we can uh, hear you still. So that's the important thing. Can you hear me, Daniel? You got me still? All right, Daniel's going to be right back. So one more time, um, Rockfish Opener is on Monday, and I will be on board. The Island Spirit, really looking forward to that. Daniel should rejoin us in a moment. If you'd like to order one of these hats that you see here or a shirt, go to Embroidery creations.net and you can do that i think daniel is about to join us again so you don't have to look at me the whole time here he is there he is you're back magically <laughs> yep sorry we missed you hey no problem so great stuff uh, do you fish any deeper than 300 feet ever yeah we could uh we could fish as deep as we want really but um there's some pretty good local rock fishing um, spots that are right around 300 feet. So we'll uh, we'll see if that works out. It's possible that we could fish deeper, but uh, that's the depth I'd, I'd like to fish at. You know, All right. That sounds good to me. I'm going to read you a couple of uh, questions here, comments. Sure. Tony says, good afternoon, guys. Thank you for taking the time for, to uh, get this uh, info to us on these videos. And, Tony, I know I speak for Daniel when we thank you for joining us, taking time out of your busy day. He wants yeah, to know, is it, is it true that you can only keep two reds now? Yeah, unfortunately, that is uh, what we're dealing with this year. So they cut the rockfish limit, or the red rockfish limit in half again. So now it's only two reds and eight other miscellaneous rockfish. So, yeah, only, only two reds this year. But uh, we're going to have to spend some time trying to find some uh, other good stuff to take home some canaries bankies boscos there's other good stuff we can catch but it uh it is unfortunate that we can only have two reds now i know but the, like you say the variety of rockfish in california is really extraordinary there's so many yeah. different kinds and filling up a limit of fish is still not going to be a big chore it should be just fine yeah 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 they'll be okay oh. All right, very good. David Rosenthal says, good afternoon. And he asks, what conditions are you looking for when you're searching for the elusive halibut? Well, you want to look at the water. You want to have, um, you know, good looking water. You want to see some bait on the electronics. That, that helps a lot sometimes. Just there being uh, some bait around for these halibut to be eating, obviously. Um, and then you, you need to move a little bit. You know, when you're uh, fishing for halibut, you don't just mark them on the bottom. You don't just see like halibut fish marks on the bottom. There's no such thing. They kind of camouflage themselves to the bottom and then live in like the, the sand or the mud there. So um, you're really just trying to move. You're trying to have good movement and uh, cover a lot of ground. So you want to be, a, you know, you want to be drifting at a speed of around a knot or so, I'd say. So you want to have a little bit of drift and, and be able to cover a good amount of ground there and you know, try to find a patch of biting fish and, you know, kind of figure out where you're getting bit at and just, just keep, uh, keep drifting over that little zone. Yeah. I was going to ask you that if you start to get consistent bites, I mean, it's like anything else, right? I mean, yeah. you're jigging around for albacore, you start catching some albacore, you start turning a circle, you're walking on the beach, trying to catch surface, you get bit, you stop and fish yep. the same thing with halibut. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if we get a bite, I'll, you know, if I'm on deck, I'll run up and look at my electronics to kind of take note of where the where the bite happened. And, you know, obviously, if we're getting bites in the same like area, we'll, we'll just keep uh, try to key in on where that that fish is and get set up on top of it again. You know, I'm really I mean, probably one of my favorite kind of fishing is rockfish. At the mm -hmm. same time, I'm really thrilled to hear that you're not exclusively going to fish rockfish. You're going to give the halibut sea bass and other game yeah. fish, maybe even a yellowtail, a shot. Maybe. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we always want to give everyone a shot at catching a, you know, trophy once-in-a-lifetime fish whenever they come out. Rockfish is cool and fun and all, and we're uh, very happy to be able to fish for them again. But it's, it's just not going to be the end-all, be-all only only species we're going to fish for just because it's open but we will for those wanting to fish rockfish we will spend plenty of time like the majority of the day doing it but i'm just trying to let you guys know we will set aside a little bit of time to catch an exotic 
Well, in a perfect world, man, we limit out on rockfish and then we go searching <laughs> for the, the game fish, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. Anthony, go ahead. Uh, Anthony, it is so good to see you here, my friend. And he says he can't wait. He'll be on the Native Sun in two weeks. Uh, he can't thank you guys enough for the info. He soaks all this knowledge up. And, man, that's the kind of guy I like because a guy that's open to learning is a guy that will be successful in fishing. Oh, yeah. And that's why, you know, Daniel, I tell people, you know, they'll ask me for advice about fishing and I'll give them the advice. But I always end up saying, talk to a crew member. They're out there yeah. every day. You're talking to a guy in a podcast studio. And while I get this <laughs> info from the guys all the time mm -hmm. and I trust my sources, there's nothing better than talking to a guy who's been on the water the last two weeks in a row and has seen it all unfold. He knows exactly what to tell you to do. Yeah, 100 percent. You know, uh, the guys on the crew are very friendly. At least I'm speaking for my boat. Everyone's very friendly, very knowledgeable about what we're doing. And we want the best for you. We want you guys to catch as much fish as possible and have as good of a time as possible. You know, there's uh, there's nobody else that wants you to succeed more than us. Because, uh, you know, it directly benefits us when you guys catch a lot of fish and have a good time. So we want to we want to keep that going. And then, Anthony, you said you're going on the Native Sun. And I'm sure you've seen their uh, fish counts and their halibut derby and all that. They've yeah, they've been crushing it. So, uh, yeah, talk to the crew when you get on there. Obviously, you probably heard some halibut tips from this show, and that's great. But if uh, if you go on there and the crew members are telling you about something else that's working, you know, don't don't be afraid to listen to them. Give it a shot. They'll uh, they'll know what's best for you on on that day. Best of luck, Anthony. And we hope we see you up in the Channel Islands out of Ventura on the Island Spirit one day. Also, really, really soon. Incidentally, we have a trip with you on May the thirty first. That's going to be a lot of fun too. Yes, Can't sir. wait for that one. Um, Tony wants to know. What is the best moon phase when you are in search of white sea bass? Uh, it seems like before the full moon, the sea bass uh, bite pretty well. So like uh, the week leading up to the full moon is usually pretty good. Um, Omar says, grunion run, baby. And we did see a lot of grunion up and down the Southern California beaches last night. I, of course, mm -hmm. was snoring away like a little baby because I need my <laughs> beauty rest and there it's not go. working. I think I'm going to have to resort to plastic surgery. But I want to ask you this question because I normally focus on surf fishing when I'm talking about grunion uh, and, and how predators move up on the beach. And we haven't seen those guitar fish that I talked about all year. And I guarantee mm -hmm. you they're here on that grunion. That's why they're hearing, you know, there's probably a bit more. Do you oh, yeah. ever try to correlate a grunion run to sport fishing? Have you ever thought about that or said, Hey, there's a grunion run. It seems like this happens or if you, I've never thought about it to be honest with you. Yeah, honestly, uh, I've never thought about it either, but you, you could be onto something. It's, it's interesting, but yeah, I've, I've never personally really paid attention or thought about it. I'm going to start, I'll start uh, doing my own little thing when you, well, I'll watch you this weekend too. And we'll see yeah. what happens right uh, as we move along. Yeah. All right. Anthony Guerrero says, yes, sir. I talk to the crew guys when I uh, go and uh, he had one that was 21 inches his Ooh. last time, just an inch short. Heartbreak, Anthony. Yep. Yeah, um, that's so, a bummer. <laughs> yeah. And in fact, uh, you were recommending last time that if you have a fish that's like 22 inches, uh, exactly, probably a good idea to toss it. Yeah, it's just, it's not worth it. Uh, when we are measuring our fish and making sure they're legal, we always like to just kind of give it a half inch, you know, leniency. So if it's like maybe barely 22 inches, if I stretch it, like... It's it's not worth it. Just let it live. You don't want to get a ticket. If you want to, you know, keep a fish, measure it out, and make sure it's like a nice 22 and a half inches or so, so you don't have to stress and worry about getting a ticket. It's just it's not worth it. Yeah, no kidding, man. Um, what's the plan for this weekend? What are we doing? We're fishing sheep's head, whitefish, halibut, looking for sea bass. Yeah, Am yeah I for, right? uh, for Saturday and Sunday, obviously, we can't keep rockfish yet. That opener's on Monday. But, yeah, we'll be spending some time catching, you know, whitefish, sheephead, sculpin, looking around to fill the sacks with some bottom stuff. And then, uh, 
yeah, fish halibut for a while, try to find a sea bass, whatever, do some scouting, try to um, try to look for a nice, nice area to catch an exotic at. Omar has a great question. He said, if he comes out and brings three setups, what should they be? I like it. So um, I'm going to answer this question for Monday going on for the rest of the season. So starting Monday, we'll be able to fish cod. So you're going to want one like medium setup, I'd say, like medium weight setup. Um, make sure your reel has a lot of space in case you're fishing deep, like a bigger reel. You're going to want a braided line. I recommend having a lot of braided line and then a short like mono top shot. Um, so your first setup should be a medium rod, plenty of braided line, and a double drop loop rig with a 16-ounce sinker. And a couple circle hooks, like uh, maybe size 2.0 or 3.0 circle hooks for rockfish. That'll be your first setup. Your second setup can be a bit lighter, smaller reel, if that's what you'd prefer. Um, but also a double dropper loop, but with small J hooks, like size 1 or 1.0 J hooks. And like an 8 or 10 ounce sinker. That's for fishing shallow, like whitefish, sheephead, that sort of deal. Then uh, you could have a third rod to fish halibut with, um, halibut or sea bass. On that rod, I'd highly, highly recommend having fluorocarbon, some like 20 or 25 pound fluorocarbon, and a uh, single, excuse me, single dropper loop setup with a uh, small hook for live bait, like a size one J hook and a, say like a six ounce torpedo sinker on your dropper loop for uh, for live bait fishing. Perfect. That that settles it right there. Anthony Guerrero says he was fishing on the pier last week. He caught a big old four foot long guitar fish, also known as he points out appropriately, a shovel nose shark. Are you into the whole slow? Are you into the slow pitch thing? Do you like? Uh, is that cool to come out and slow pitch? Uh, I've seen people doing it, but I, I don't really have an opinion on it. I've I've never personally tried it or you know seen it enough really to uh say yeah it's great or no it sucks i i i'm really indifferent on it if you want to try it go ahead but if it's not working out please fish some squid scripts <laughs> <laughs> sounds like you feel like fishing with real bait is going to produce better results on a regular basis i promise it will yeah uh you can't go wrong with squid scripts there is uh there is nothing when we're fishing deep there is nothing that won't eat the squid strips even if you want that that bigger rockfish or ling cod, they eat the squid strips just as good, if not better, than your your jig will or whatever else you want to fish. But uh, yeah, really important to please fish with bait. It's gonna help you and uh, fill your sack up a lot better than trying something you know different. Man, this show is becoming popular. The questions are loading <laughs> yeah, in here. A lot of questions. Tell you. I like it. We thank you all for joining us, Daniel. Daniel and I are. Uh, I really want to send our thanks to each and every one of you. I know the answer to this because I'm starting to know Daniel so well, but I'm going to let Daniel answer. <laughs> and he says, do you like the reverse dropper loop for halibut? I think it works. I think it's great. And uh, you can certainly try it, but I prefer the conventional dropper loop. I, I like to fish halibut with the sinker on the bottom and the, the hook up above. I feel like it works better for me, but um the reverse drop loop certainly does work and feel free to try it. Switch it up. All right. Very good. Omar says, Phil, you are the man. Thank you for all the great content and thank you to the captain as well. Thank you, Daniel. You're the man here. Thank you, Omar. Thank, thank you uh, guys all for the questions. We appreciate it. Yeah, we do, man. We're nothing without you guys. And we appreciate it very much. Omar, Robert Graber, who will make his debut on the morning briefing tomorrow, playing a guitar fish. Yes, Daniel, I have seen the video. It may be banned on YouTube before long, so make sure you tune in early tomorrow. I'll check it uh, out. It's pretty uh, bizarre. No, I'm kidding. Robert, <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, sorry to join a bit late. Good afternoon, Phil and Daniel. Thanks for covering the 805. All for you, Robert. Happy hump day. To all the Freeman Adventure family members, see you on the island spirit.
on April 4th. Woohoo! So awesome. See be- you then, Robert. I believe that's uh, the Rockfish Rumble, the Western Outdoor News Rockfish Rumble. Oh, right that's on. Coming up next week. So uh, we're all excited for that. We'll see you then. Oh, that's going to be fantastic. And uh, do you know Robert? Has he fished with you before? I don't think I've met Robert yet, but it looks like we will be meeting soon. Super Looking great guy. To- you're you're going to enjoy fishing with him. No doubt about it. It's going to be fantastic. Uh, let's <laughs> see. Uh, Calico Chris. Awesome show. Looking forward to getting on the Island Spirit. Hey, Chris, it was good to see you the other day, my friend, both at our surf fishing event and out there at Bass Pro Shops. That was good. Anthony, you guys have a great evening. My break is over. He had a little break. So <laughs> nice. he was joining us good on evening. his break. <laughs> um, so this weekend, obviously, we're not fishing rockfish. Have you heard? I, I, I think you've had a little bit of weather, as everybody has. But yeah. any, rum, any rumblings up there about sea bass or halibut <laughs> or squid? I, I, I don't even think anybody's been out, have they? No, no one's been out. Uh, unfortunately, we had to cancel our trips last weekend because of the weather. Uh, weather does look nice for this weekend, though. If you um, if you don't mind a little bit of rain, the the weather does look pretty nice. Um, so you guys can come join us this weekend, and we'll spend some time looking. We did have good fishing and saw saw some good sign on uh, the prior weekend. We uh, had good halibut fishing, caught a sea bass as well. Things were looking good and lively, so uh, hoping to get back and see kind of more of the same there. All right, very good. There you go, Anthony. Uh, let's see. Uh, Vanta Rally. Hello, Friedman. Do you like... Is that frying things? Is that what that says? I think so, yes. Also, good afternoon, guys. I love frying things. Like, <laughs> uh, all kinds of things, man. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like frying things, Daniel? Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind it. <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, hey, well, I mean, if you're talking about fish tacos or something like that, there's nothing better on the face of this earth. I know I'm not supposed to eat it because I'm on carnivore now. I've been carnivore here for a while. So all that oh, breading, man. all that carb stuff. It's yeah. not uh, something, but man, when I'm in Mexico sometimes and I walk by a fish taco stand, I can't resist. And that fish that you guys catch up there is just tailor-made for a fish taco, Daniel. Oh, absolutely. It's that like perfect light meat that you're looking for, uh, especially that rockfish. Nothing like some uh, cod tacos. All right, Carlos Sanchez. Hey, Carlos, it is so good to see you here. What's up, fellas? Are you guys targeting halibut? And rockfish. So he's joined us a little bit late. Maybe you could reiterate. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this weekend, guys, for Saturday and Sunday, uh, we can't fish rockfish yet. But we'll be targeting whitefish, sheephead, sculpin for the first part of the day. And then we'll be fishing halibut and sea bass after that. But uh, starting Monday and uh, going forward for a good while, we're going to be fishing rockfish primarily for the first part of our day. And then spending some time on uh, halibut and sea bass after that. So, yeah, um, rockfish and halibut should be on the menu for Monday. All right, Q-Ball is with us. Hey, Q, good to see you here. You know, Daniel, when I talk about the weather, sometimes I get myself into trouble because I um, I honestly rarely look at whether it's going to rain or not. I'm more, I'm just concerned about wind. That's Me what too. I'm looking at. And yeah. I, when I tell people, I said, I don't even know, you know, I don't know if it's going to rain or not. What do I care? If you get a little bit wet, what? wear some, you know, some wet gear. Don't be worried yeah. about that. But it's Get a rain wind. jacket. You know, the, the fish certainly don't mind. They're already wet. It's all, <laughs> it's all good. Just bring your, uh, bring your wet gear and it'll be all right. All right. So it may rain a little bit, but you've looked at the wind for this weekend and it sounds like it's going to be nice. Yeah. I've looked at the wind report and it, it really looks pretty good. Um, certainly nothing to... Um, ruin a day or anything like that. Looks like a very, very good weather day as far as wind goes. All right. Tuna Kid is with us, and it's good to see you here. Hey, guys, always great to hear a fresh report from out there. And, man, Daniel does it better than anybody. That was me saying that, and I'm sure Tuna Kid (laughs) agrees. What's up? uh, What do you guys think about maybe having salmon up that way this year? Is that... uh, season open is that possible um to be honest with you we don't really see salmon um over here where we fish that's a bit farther north 
Uh, I don't I don't know anything about the salmon season. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, that makes two of us. Yeah, salmon is is uh, more of a Northern California deal, and uh, I don't even think that it's the season for salmon right now. I'm pretty sure it's later in the year. Although I am old enough to remember catching salmon out of Newport Beach, Redondo <laughs> Beach, and up in your neck of the woods, but that was back in prehistoric times, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, you'll see uh, like one boat maybe every couple years will catch a salmon out here, but uh, it's definitely not a not a common thing. Carlos Sanchez sends all his thanks for the great answers that you've been giving, as do I, Daniels. Back to the Rockfish opener. So starting when that Rockfish opener starts, of course, at some point, right now, the Rockfish opener, I mean, everybody wants to catch Rockfish and everything else, but you've already mentioned. Oh, now Phil's gone. Uh Uh-oh. Am I back? back. (laughs) As the season goes on, you start to catch barracuda, you start to catch calico bass, you start to catch halibut. Man, those kind of combo trips are so freaking awesome. Absolutely, yeah. Um, We never really want to decide what we're going to fish before we kind of, you know, get out there. Obviously, it's different for the rockfish opener. We haven't been able to fish at it all this year, so we're going to you know, dive in and get started on that. But as the year goes on, we're, we're just kind of going to be doing freelance trips. You know, we're just going to kind of get out there and see what the, what's the best chance for, you know, catching fish and having a fun day, you know, at that particular time and go from there. We're not going to really um, make plans too far in advance on like what kind of fishing we're going to be doing. So there's a lot, lot to do up here, a lot to offer. We're going to kind of just, um, pay attention, see how things are shaking out and just look to give you guys the best uh, fishing available on that day. And before we take off, this is the fastest half hour on YouTube. Let me tell you, I just looked up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I feel like I've been talking for five minutes here, man. What's yeah. going on here? Um, you got your crew guys. They will tie everybody up. They will recheck it, make sure everything's right. They'll check your drag. You got all that going on. Absolutely. All right, Daniel, anything else we need to uh, talk about? We've got trips this weekend. we got the Rockfish opener on April 1st. I'll be there shooting photos and video and harassing you and the crew. Anything else we need to talk about? I think that pretty much covers it. But, yeah, guys, if you want to come out fishing, give the landing a call, 805-676-3474. Uh, you can talk to Sal there in the landing, or you can visit us online at VenturaSportFishing.com. And like Phil said, he's going to be here on Monday for the Rockfish opener. Uh, I'm super excited for that trip. So if you'd like to come uh, open up the Rockfish season with us, uh, give the landing a call. And I hope to see you guys all on Monday. Daniel, always a pleasure, man. Really great job again. It's always good to see you. And I'll see you on Monday for sure. Awesome. Thank you so much, Phil. I'll see you soon. Take care, Daniel. Take care. Good night. Bye-bye.